Hello, everyone. My name is Natalie Palto. I am a co-founder of Blue Life RX, and I am here to tell you the three steps that you can take to overcome picky eating. How amazing. Okay, so to keep it very, very simple, number one is we are going to talk about our resistors. Resistors are kids who are absolutely have maybe three to five foods, maybe 10 at the max. They are definitely not eating a lot of plants and they are resisting every single approach so far. Using this technique is very, very helpful. So this is step one is understanding the fading technique. The fading technique is a 10% increment using the lowest hanging fruit, the foods that they love the most and slowly fading in a newer food that is going to be healthier. Examples of this are in pancakes when you add a little bit of beans if they're lacking in the protein department or, and especially we know that picky, well, if you didn't know, picky eaters actually generally have a zinc deficiency. And so you can actually find ways of supplementing that zinc without supplements, but with food in other foods. So this would be like adding white beans to their pancakes. There are many pancake recipes. This is not hiding foods. This is actually just using a new recipe because there are tons of recipes that have beans already in the recipe. And so this will actually not just increase microbiome feeding, it will also increase zinc, it will increase their ability and wanting to try new foods and it, they won't even be able to tell. Number, um, and so that's one example of the fading technique. At 10% increments you would start, you could increase it 10% uh, more in a few days. And so that is what I call the 10% rule. Some people call it a fading technique. They do this with also sometimes spaghetti where they will put such a minimal amount of sauce that they can't even see it or basically almost not taste it. But it is creating not just a flavor profile, but it's also recalibrating the chemistry that is making our bodies or your child's body resist food. It's also, we do need to address the fact that a child who is at the resistor stage is very uncomfortable with food. They feel that food is unsafe. It is both a psychological and a physical thing. Psychologically, they are deregulated when they are in a state of wanting to try new food. Their survival mode kicks in and they are resistant because they do not deem the food as safe. It is unsafe and so survival will always win. And then of course, number two is the chemistry. When we have deficiencies within our bodies, which we know most kids these days have because of the lack of nutrient dense foods that we have available to us, um, we will see more picky eating due to this as well. So number one, the fading technique is the first step, also known in the Blue Life Autism Program, which you can learn all about down here if you have a child with autism, um, if you want them to get to better gains and better and get to reclaim milestones, there is a free masterclass. It is everything that I teach and have done with my own son uh, to get us from severe nonverbal to no diagnosis. It is completely free. It is a two hours of jam packed information. So enjoy that. It'll be linked below. And moving forward, the next part of our chat will be into going into the adventurer stage. In the adventurer stage, you are looking at children who are ready for a little bit of adventure. They maybe they're starting to look at your food curiously, or maybe you have been doing the fading technique for a few months now. And you have taken made the decision that they you feel that they are ready. Now, if we do not stop with the fading technique, step one is just compounded with step two. Step two is all about using the principles of food chaining. So this can look like having a safety plate. It could look like having um, a plate for them. But what happens is, is we, again, use the foods that feel the safest and bring in foods that are very, very similar or presented in different ways so that they then feel that realize that there is only one micro change that's happening. So in, in this example, you could go from um, like peanut butter and jam toast to eventually having maybe like a frozen fruit jelly made with just the fruits and then um, having them have like just cut up like strawberries on top of their toast and then moving forward to getting them to actually eat a strawberry on its own. So food chaining is a process of using something that is already working and chaining things that are very similar and have maybe just had one of the four things changed. These are, these are things like the color, the texture, the shape, or um, the look of it. And so these are a really great process. So using chaining is very new, but very successful in the picky eating world, even for severe picky eaters.
Number three is all about understanding negotiation. Negotiation is something that is very successful when done properly. Again, we would never go from step from step zero to step three. You want to have a child who feels the food is safe, that feels that that their chem and that their chemistry has been recalibrated by the time you get to this food negotiating tip. When you choose a food to negotiate with, um, you want to make sure it's one of their favorites, but you also want to make sure that it's the healthiest version of that. For example, we did black bean brownies. It was like having cake. And when there were foods that we really wanted my son to try, we would do um, such a technique, which is very different. I believe it's called escape extinction, which is almost force feeding your children. We don't do that. That actually creates trauma and will actually make your children even pickier for longer. So using the fate, so using this uh, negotiating technique is very good. Now this is will come at a time if you have a sensory or an, a child with autism or ADHD, this will come at a time when they are ready to negotiate. You are going to continue with food fading and food and the 10% rule and food uh, chaining until that comes to fruition. Once that has come to fruition and you want them to eat, let's just say broccoli or cauliflower, and you, what you can do is negotiate a small piece of cauliflower within first, usually mostly accepted within the food um, that they are enjoying. So this would be like putting it inside or inside a bite of the black bean brownie and they can experience it. Eventually, very quickly, actually, you will be able at this point of the game, be able to do a bite for a bite. And then what we do is we basically just reverse engineer the fading technique and we slowly fade out the food that is the preferred food to, for example, two bites of the broccoli or the broccoli or cauliflower to one bite of the brownie, two bites, three bites of the broccoli or cauliflower to the bite of the brownie to the point where then we now have a full serving of broccoli and cauliflower and we can revert to how we want to um, eat normally. This is both from a professional and personal standpoint. I professionally learned about neophobia in, um, my certification for advanced child brain development, but I also was the mother of a child who only ate three foods, chicken nuggets, grilled cheeses, and French fries. So I myself understand exactly where you're coming from. If even what I've told you today seems very impossible, I want to promise you that it isn't if you actually stick to it and you try and start exactly in the process. At this time, I have a 100% success rate with, with children overcoming picky eating with this technique. So welcome, I'm so happy that you guys are here. Make sure to hit the um, subscribe button right over here uh, and make sure that if this was valuable to you, share it with friends and family who have picky eaters, regardless of if they're on the spectrum or not. Um, our world is very nutritionally deficient and we really want to make sure that our kids have the best outcome possible in them moving forward. If you have any questions, drop them below or send me a personal message.